At the Gray Fossil Site, one of our primary goals is to collect and preserve fossils so they can be available for paleontology research and public education. But the journey of a fossil from the dig site to the display case is often long and complex, involving many people with many specialties. Every fossil dug up at Gray has its own unique journey, but they all start off in the ground. Five million years ago, the Gray Fossil Site was a pond, home to a thriving ecosystem of plants and animals. Year after year, as fine sediment settled to the pond floor, it built up in layers, burying any plant and animal remains that sank to the bottom. Some of those remains became preserved as fossils, hidden treasures locked away in the ancient clay. That's where we come in. During the field season, which usually runs from May to October, our dig crew gets to work excavating those fossils from the ground. Equipped with small flat trowels, the crew scrapes slowly and carefully, centimeter by centimeter, through the layers of clay. When they come across a fossil, they'll document its position, gently clear the clay away from it, and collect it in a plastic bag. If the fossil is something big, like part of a rhino, picking it up might cause it to fall apart, so the crew will create a plaster jacket. The jacket is a protective casing, with soft paper and plastic on the inside and hard plaster on the outside. Once complete, it forms a safe and stable container for transporting the fossil. But most of the fossils at Gray are too small to see while digging. So, all the excavated clay is gathered up and sent to the screenwashing team. There, the sediment is poured over a fine screen and washed with water. As the clay is cleared away, it reveals tiny fossils, bones, teeth, seeds, and more. This combination of digging and screenwashing ensures that we collect as many fossils as we possibly can, and then all of the excavated fossils are sent inside. Their first stop is the Fossil Preparation Lab. Fresh out of the ground, our fossils aren't ready yet to be handled or studied. They're usually broken, jumbled, crumbling, and encrusted with clay. The job of the prep lab crew is to prepare the fossils to be cataloged and stored. First priority is cleaning and stabilizing. Lab staff and volunteers use brushes and alcohol swabs to clear the clay away, and then soak the fossils in a thin glue that seeps between any cracks to keep the fossil from crumbling. If there are enough preserved pieces of the fossil, the lab crew can then set out to reassemble them, using a different glue solution to stick the broken bits back together. Also in the lab, plaster jackets are reopened and the fossils inside are fully excavated before they move on to cleaning. And meanwhile, those tiny fossils found during screenwashing go to our picking team, who slowly and carefully sort through all the little finds under the microscope, separating and organizing wood, seeds, bone, teeth, and rocks. When the fossils are all ready, they move on to their new home, the collections room. Tens of thousands of fossils have been found at the Gray Fossil Site, and we don't just pile them willy-nilly in a box. Each and every fossil specimen needs to be carefully cataloged and stored. Each fossil will receive a unique number, like a book in a library, and their own space in one of the shelves or cabinets of the collections room. But they don't go there alone. Throughout the whole journey, the fossils are accompanied by data, when and where they were found, who worked on them, what treatment they received in the prep lab, our collections team puts together all of this data and places it on a tag with each fossil. Everything in this room, from the paper and ink used for the tags to the foam that the fossils sit on, is long-lasting and non-harmful to the fossils. The cabinets are sturdy and resistant to the elements, and the temperature and humidity in the room is carefully monitored. We want these fossils and their data to still be in pristine condition 50, 100, or 200 years from now. And all of the information about each fossil is entered into a digital database so it can be accessed quickly and easily. Now, finally, the fossils are ready for our mission, research and education. Some fossils will go on display in the museum in safe exhibits. In other cases, we'll want to show off a fossil, but don't feel comfortable putting it out in a display, so we'll create a plastic replica, an exact copy to go on display while the original stays home in the collections room. And all of the fossils, once cataloged and stored, are now ready to be handled and studied by researchers. 
ETSU scientists, students, and paleontologists from other institutions near and far come to our collections room to answer scientific questions about the ancient ecosystem of Gray. In the end, this research is published in scientific journals to be shared and scrutinized by other paleontologists around the world. As I said, every fossil has a unique journey. Some go through all these steps fairly quickly, while others can take years. Our most complete rhino skeleton was discovered in the ground in 2004, put on display in 2007, and finally described as a new species in a scientific study published in 2019. Every exhibit museum visitors see and every scientific conclusion about the gray fossil site comes at the end of many steps performed by many hard-working scientists, students, staff, and volunteers. Some of the most exciting fossils at our site are still on their journey, in the lab being reassembled, in collections being examined, and even still in the ground, waiting to be discovered.